and just two days to go until the NFL draft when we have some answers. Look at that. I know. We're taking a look at Will Levis's odds to be the number one pick and how much it's changed in the past 24 hours, 48 hours. He was plus 5,000 on the 23rd. Fast forward to today on the 25th, plus 550, plus 500 thereabout. This is all according to our partners over at Caesars. Of course, Bryce Young, still the favorite to go number one overall at minus 1,200. And our guy, Pete Prisco, who is a Will Levis fan, this is his first Maybe round. Pete did it. Maybe this is what did it. Pete did it. Yeah, he tipped draft. him off on Reddit for sure. Yeah. We'll have to ask him about it. This is his mock. He has Will Levis going number one overall to the Panthers. That's Zach's team. We'll have to ask Zach his thoughts on will be happy. Will yeah. Levis being QB1. Um, his top five, he's got four QBs going in the top five. Bryce Young going number two. Jalen Carter, three to the Cardinals. CJ Stroud going four to the Colts. And then Anthony Richardson rounding out the top five to Seattle. And we have the man himself, Pete Prisco, the creator of the list with us on set. And then we have Rick Spielman here um, to, this is what I'm guessing, disagree with you. But of we'll course. get in, Yeah, of course. We'll get into that in a moment. But let's kick things off starting about Will Levis, number one on your list to the Panthers. I mean, Rick and, and other people have said he's maybe too strong. Yeah, he has a cannon for an arm, but he, can he control it? Why are guys like Rick wrong, and why do you think Carolina could be getting a potential star if they draft Will Levis number one? No, don't get me wrong. He has flaws. Yeah. There, there are a lot of <laughs> flaws, and there are a lot of flaws with every single one of the quarterbacks in this draft, and that's the problem. So when I ultimately did my work, I came back to Will Levis, and he was the guy I would pick first overall. He's big. He's powerful. He's probably too big. I think Rick's right from that standpoint. He's got to lose a little body mass so he can be a little more uh, fluid in the way he throws the football. But there's a ton to like, and there were a lot of reasons why he wasn't good. Offensive coordinator, terrible. Offensive line, terrible. Wide receivers, not very good. Running back, 4'7 guy. Uh, he was hurt. He got shots in his foot, in his toe, and also in his shoulder for five games. So you tell me. Here you go. In the SEC, go win games. How can he do it? The picture was muddy for him on every play. And by contrast, when you look at a guy like Bryce Young, you look at a guy like C.J. Stroud, their pictures were almost never muddy. And that's the difference. That's why I like Will Levis. And I think he should be the number one overall pick. I don't think he will be, but I do think he should be. This is all, Jacqueline, a publicity stunt for Pete to get more followers on his Twitter. Because Yeah, I care about sense. that. I care about my followers a great deal. This makes absolutely no sense. Everything he just listed, he's trying to make an excuse for the guy. I understand he's talented, but he still makes poor decisions. He still throws bad interceptions. He still is too tight in his upper body. He's not consistent making off-scheduled throws. To me, when you watch the two quarterbacks play back-to-back, -back, and I got an opportunity to go watch him live at their pro days, which Pete doesn't agree that pro days tell you anything. They don't. But he is too mechanical. And guys that are this mechanical usually end up not being what you expect them to be. But to think that Will Levis, the way he's played his junior year, you wanted to see him make a jump the next year, he wasn't able to make it. And I understand all the excuses. And Pete must have spent two nights coming up with excuses how I can make this guy the number one overall pick. When you make excuses, you make mistakes. Well, I can make an excuse for why I wouldn't take Bryce Young number one overall. It's because at Alabama at times, the scout told me he was under 180 pounds. Think about that. You're drafting a quarterback first overall who's five foot ten, under 180 pounds. I just can't do it. He's a great passer. He can make the throws. He's accurate. He anticipates. He processes the information. But he's too little. That's why I went with Will Levis. Yeah. No, when you think of is 203 pounds oh, at stop the combine. It. People, Please. you know what a lot of scouts said, Rick? They said he looked pregnant at the combine. So how much water <laughs> did he drink? Um, now, Pete, when you think about Carolina's division, the weather, that doesn't, I mean, you don't cut up some slack there, even though he's a, a smaller quarterback, but he's not playing in 
a gauntlet. No, but that's not the problem for me. The problem for me is all the big guys on the other side of the yeah. ball. You look at the big physical quarterbacks who have broken down running the football and playing, and he doesn't run. Don't get me wrong. He's not a runner like Cam Newton or Lamar Jackson. He's going to stay in the pocket, but he does move to throw, and you're going to, you are going to take shots, and I'm concerned about him. Somebody, a scout told me, and Rick might d d debate this, said that he had a wrist like a 17-year-old high school kid. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? All I know is he does throw touchdowns. And Jacqueline, you're, I think, a Florida Gator fan. I don't I think am. you're a Southern fan. No. But the last time I looked, there's a lot of big dudes playing in the SEC as well. And he doesn't miss a game. Oh, he missed. missed he got hurt. Game. He got hurt. And he, and he and got he hurt. And he, no. And he, he didn't have hurt. to take in his foot and his shoulder and his eye and his ear and everywhere else that Will Levis had to take shots. Well, he was legitimately hurt. He played through it. You should give him credit for that. You love that. All right, we're going to move on to Jalen Carter. You have him going to the Cardinals, number three, over a guy like Will Anderson. We know there's the off-the-field concerns. Of course, that's a big topic of conversation. But why are you going to take Jalen Carter over a guy like Will Anderson? Why is he a better fit in Arizona? I think he's a better player. Okay. Uh, I think he's the best defensive player in this draft, and I don't even think it's close. I think that's how good he is. This is Chris Jones, and I think if he can get in the right building and again we don't know what that building will be like it's a new coaching staff you hear good things about those guys in that building though but if he gets in there with the right group I think he has a chance to be special Will Anderson I like him as a player I don't think he's sudden I don't think he's twitchy I think he's going to be a really good player I don't think he's going to be Von Miller or Derek Thomas this kid has a chance to be truly special now yeah there are concerns no question about it but guys go in the building sometimes and they change they get a little money, they can go one of two ways. And I think I'm hopeful that this kid goes in the right direction. Well, hopeful is a great word to describe because you're hopeful that he's going to be able to function in the NFL with all the red flags that are coming up this offseason. There's no question about his talent, and I agree with you, Pete. He's the most talented defensive player in this draft. And if you want to be honest with yourself, the most talented player in this draft overall when he plays hard. But he takes snaps off, all the concerns that came up starting at the Combine. Then he goes back to make sure his legal issues are taken care of. Then you go and you look at he's nine pounds overweight at his pro day. Biggest uh, interview, uh, interview that he's going to have this entire offseason. He tells the teams that I'm not going to take a uh, trip on a top 30 unless you're in a top 10. Well, what if I'm number 12 and I want to move up in the top 10 to get you? I can't uh, interview you or bring you into our organization. The other thing is, look, Jonathan Gannon, all, the new regime in Arizona, they're trying to establish a new culture. That's why they're there. And I don't know what the culture is like in Arizona, but if it was solid, both those, uh, uh, the GM and the head coach would still be there. So you want to put him in a situation where he can learn and grow up as a pro, but I don't know if that's the Arizona situation. You take... Will Anderson, who I love Will Anderson, I know you don't agree with me, but this guy is as good a football player as he is on the field. He's an even better person and higher character guy off the field. And if I'm using my first draft pick, a top five draft pick at number three, I'm going to take the for sure thing and I'm going to take Will Anderson. Uh, I disagree with him. Yeah. He, Rick <laughs> wants a team full of choir boys. I mean, I, I, I'm going to take chances on the best player and hope I have confident in, confidence in myself to make sure he changes how he is as a person. That's what I would how, how, you, you got 53 guys you have to take care of in that building. How much resources are you going to put towards one player? Well, if I have, if I have good 53 in that building, they're going to take care of them. The players, Do they have good Three, you're, you're making that assumption. You can't make that assumption the first time you're a head coach and general manager making a top five pick. See, Rick Take never buys. He never buys into the idea that people change when they become around grown men and get into become professionals. And, and believe me, I've seen guys that are are good kids go the other way when they get in the NFL as well. And Rick has as well. Sure. It happens. So Pete, Leopards you're going with Jalen Carter. Leopards do not change your spots. Uh, you're wrong about that. And he's on the Will Anderson train. We know that about Rick. All right, let's talk about a, a team that's 
probably most likely going to draft a quarterback, at least with their number two pick of the Texans. You think they're going to go with Bryce Young, and then with number 12, you have them taking Jordan Addison to kind of give Bryce Young some weapons there. Why do you like that duo? I know we talked about some other QB wide receiver duos yesterday, but why is this your duo for, for Houston? I think Jordan Addison's the best receiver in this draft class. And, and I know he only weighs 175 pounds or 180 pounds, but Devontae Smith only weighed 175 pounds, and he set an all-time record last year for catches by an Eagles receiver. I think Addison's that same type of player. You go back to his pit days when he was catching passes from Kenny Pickett. He did so many different things. You talk to the wide receiver coaches around the league, they rave about his ability to run routes, and that kind of is the biggest difference with me. I think he knows how to change speeds. He knows how to break down. He knows how to be deceptive running his routes. Yeah, Smith and Jigba can run routes, but some people think he's only just a slot guy. I think this guy could do so much more. He's my number one receiver. Well, you just argued with me about a quarterback weighing 175 pounds, which is not true, but yet you're going to take a midget receiver here. And I love Addison, Addison, and I am glad that when I talk to you this fall that you are using my comparison in Devontae Smith. But... When you look at Smith and Jigba and what he's been able to accomplish, I understand he did not play this year. He had the hamstring injury. When you talk to everybody at Ohio State, including players, when they had uh, when they had uh, Garrett Wilson, when they had Alave, they said this was the best receiver on that team. And when you look at what he did at the combine, I went to his pro day. He ran four five zero, which is fast enough. He weighs twenty more pounds than Addison does. And he can play inside and outside. He may be best in the slot, but he is just as good of route runner. He's just as fast. He's just as productive. And he's bigger. So take the bigger guy that's going to come make an immediate impact on your football team. You know what I love about Rick? All year he complained about guys not playing in bowl games and not going to all-star games and sitting out games. And here we have a guy who didn't play the entire season. And some people dispute whether he was really hurt at the end of the year or he just jaked it and sat out the season. What are you talking about? How can you justify taking him, Rick? Just watch this workout. Watch this production. <laughs> Am I not wrong, though? You hate guys that sit out games. I got him. Yep. He can only laugh. Whenever I get him, he can just laugh. He gets the last word there. Okay, we're going to talk about the Chargers. You have them selecting Mozzie Smith, number 21 overall. Pete, I know you've talked about the Chargers having issues, stopping the run. What is a guy like Smith? How does he fix that for the Chargers? He is a big space eater. And look, we, every year we go in, the Chargers go spend money in free agency on defensive linemen. Then they draft linebackers, and they still can't stop the run. And it just grates on that defense. And you want more possessions for your quarterback when you have Justin Herbert. I think they have to fix it. I think he could step in and fix it. Some people will say this is a little high for him. I love him. <laughs> I love him. I think he's going to be a dominant inside player. And about four years from now, we're going to look back on this draft and say, wow, they stole Mozzie Smith, whoever does get him. I think Rick is one of those people who might yeah, say he that. Doesn't, he doesn't. <laughs> oh, oh, great. Take a two down nose stuffer that doesn't play hard every down. Uh, you can watch him in a Ohio State game. I agree. He was dominant in that game. But you watch all this other tape. I don't think this guy plays hard every snap. And give me the argument. Well, these guys play 150 snaps a game. Of course, they're going to wear down. But how can you pass a top 10 talent in B. John Robinson in your latest uh, whatever draft this is called, mock draft or your favorite draft? I didn't even look at the title of it because I was laughing so hard. But <laughs> when you have a running back with this caliber of talent and you have Eckler, who's old in age, who wants to be traded, has one year left on his deal, more than likely going to move on, and you can get a kid that not only is going to be a weapon on the offensive side for Herbert, but what he does running the ball, his vision, his speed, his elusiveness, his ability to make plays in space, how he catches the ball out of the backfield, and the thing that he doesn't get enough credit for that's very important when you're evaluating running backs is his pass protection. And this kid is the most complete backs probably since Saquon Barkley came out and when you're picking this low in the first round and you have a potential perennial Pro Bowl player on the offensive side to go along with Justin Herbert, take some heat off your quarterback. Give this kid the ball. Let him win games for you as well. This is a no-brainer for me.
Rick, reach behind you and find your eight-track tapes and your members-only jacket because drafting a running back in the first round, that actually succeeded for the long term. You're the last guy to do that, I think, with Adrian Peterson. That was a long, long, long time ago. Running backs do not decide titles. Look at the Kansas City Chiefs a year ago. They won the Super Bowl. What'd they have? A seventh-round rookie running back. You don't need to draft a running back in the first round. I like B. John Robinson. This draft is loaded with them. Yeah, and do you think he'll even still be there? What's that? My first, he probably won't be there. My first draft in Detroit, and I was just a blessed though, scout, just starting out, was Barry Sanders. And now you're saying that we shouldn't have taken Barry Sanders. You're saying we shouldn't have taken Adrian Peterson. Those guys are different. They're a different cat. There are a lot of good running backs. I'll acknowledge that in this draft class, but they're not B. John Robinson. Rules have changed since then. It's a passing league. He's outdated, as usual. All right. We got Pete Prisco. <laughs> yeah. And Rick Spielman. <laughs> I feel like we muted him for a second. We did mute him. All right, you guys are sticking around. But if you want to hear more of Rick alongside Ryan Wilson, you can check him out on the With the First Pick podcast. They're doing mock draft after mock draft, going through every position leading up to the draft in just two days. You can download and listen wherever you get your pods, or you can scan that QR code to check him out on YouTube.